Hey folks, this is Picohan from the North American server, and this is the Gnise now. The map is New Dawn. It is the domination game mode. And a shout out to Vengeful Captain in the Atlanta and Mr. Sharkswith in the Ranger. And yes, this is a little bit of a cancer division because we have a carrier and an Atlanta and the Gnise now has a pretty strong AA as well. So the Gnise now is the Sharn Horse less consistent brother. I don't want to say it's better or worse, but it's definitely less consistent because whereas the Sharn Horse has the nine low caliber uh, fast firing guns the Gnaiz now has six larger caliber, somewhat fast firing guns, but of course not as fast as the Sharn Horse. Um, in many ways, it's like a tier 7 Miyogi, um, but at least it has Torps as well. That being said, the gameplay, in my opinion, is also a lot like the Miyogi. Uh, you need to find situations where you can get close and you can actually land shots from uh, those six larger caliber guns, in which case you will do a ton of damage. And of course, if you can't finish them with your guns, you have Torps, which the Miyogi doesn't. Um, unlike the Miyogi, the Gnais now has Turtle Back, which means that if you do get in um, to Brawling Distance, they can't really Citadel you, although PDS, uh, the Torpedo Defense, is actually worse than the Miyogi's, so you got to watch out for those Torps. This is just a trait of the Germans, really. So in this game, because we do have a division, we are top tier, we're going to go straight into the middle and see what we find there. In this case, it's actually Destroyer and the enemy Gnise now took some pot shots at the destroyer and surprised that two shells actually made contact, but I guess we are pretty close. Uh, one of the things the Sharn Horse does much better than the Gnais now is deal with destroyers. Um, partly because the Gnais now has trouble hitting them, but also because the Sharn Horse has a better chance of not overpenning. So here I'm slowing down in the smoke not really to cover myself in the smoke because firing debuff is going to make that useless anyways. I just want to see what the enemy Gnais now is doing first before I try to go up and deal with him. Um, ideally what I would want to do is go around the side of this small island where he isn't so that I can get close, but uh, he can't torp me. That being said, it looks like the enemy Gnais now doesn't actually want to push forward, so we're going to start moving instead. You can see the secondaries going off here. I do have a semi-secondary build. I believe it's uh, AFT and fire prevention, but the secondaries, while well, they're okay, secondaries in general um, are kind of a trap. So the enemy Gnais now has been angled towards us for a while now. And previously, I hadn't liked the shot, so I shot the Omaha in the back. Uh, this time, since we were a little bit closer, I did try the shot, but you'll see it was not very useful. Uh, if this was an American battleship, you probably could have gotten some damage in the superstructure, but due to the low number of not very accurate guns with very flat arcs, uh, only one shell made contact, and it was a bounce. 
launch the Torps, but they were way too slow. Uh, ironically, it was the trap secondaries that finished off that Knives Now. So that's a grand total of 4,000 damage for one kill. Took a cheeky shot at this Pensacola, and that's what I mean when I say that if the shells make contact, uh, they hit hard. That Pensacola was at like half health, and I think it took like two shells to take him out. So looking at the game, this is the five minute mark, and it kind of looks like it's already in the bag. The enemy is only down two ships, but they're two destroyers, and they basically have no map control. That being said, you should never trust a friendly team to not throw um, a massive lead. So we're going to try to keep them holed up in that northwest corner. What we want to do is just kind of push in, pick off the stragglers like this Omaha, and then see if we can deal with the ball of death that's huddled over there. The reason for taking the long way around here is twofold. One, of course, is to try to pick off the stragglers, the isolated ships, but the other is also to try to create a crossfire so the ball of death can't focus you as easily um, as you're approaching. Once again, you can see the mediocre dispersion and shell density uh, coming into play here. I've been shooting at this Omaha for a couple salvos, and he's not even that far away, and I haven't been able to finish him off. You can also see the anti-air at work here. We've shot down a couple of those Kaga planes, and they haven't even been trying to drop us. The long and mid-range auras go out pretty far, especially with AFT. Ultimately, this sort of situation where you can hunt down individual isolated ships is really good for the Gnize now because of its relatively tanky, brawling characteristics and how fast it is. I would say that the speed of the ship is really my favorite part, and at least for me, that compensates for a lot of the other weaknesses. Yes, the mediocre accuracy, the low gun count, and the general inconsistency of the guns is a pain point, but to me, you just need to play with the understanding that your perfectly aimed salvo may not take out that broadside cruiser and just play around it. That being said, I think a lot of people who don't like, say the Gnaise now or the Miyogi, don't like it because of that. So back to the game, I took some damage from the Nelson because I was going broadside to the Ball of Death. Um, what I really want to do or what I really should have done was turn in to angle rather than turn out, but I wanted to go on the west side of this island, so I turned out and turned back in. So coming up the west flank here, we just want to keep the bow in angle unless we need to get third turret action and just shoot at the best broadside target we can find. Between the Pepsi, the Gnaise Now, the Omaha, and the Kaga, we actually have four kills here. So I actually thought about ramming uh, one of the ships over here to get the fifth Kraken. 
looking at the minimap, we have given up some of the map control, but we outnumber the enemy team in ships by so much that I don't think I'm going to throw it with the ram. So we're going to keep shooting at the Nelson while we try to ram the Scharnhorst, who is coming towards us. Due to the angle and the distance of the Nelson, the shots are really only mediocre, but this is where I kind of mess up. Uh, the Scharnhorst takes torque from the cruiser, and he's very low, so I decide that I don't want to go for the ram and go for my own torps, but I execute this very poorly, and I eat all of his torps uh, instead. To top it off, my torps don't do anything because a friendly takes out the Sharn Horse with guns. And now we're against a medium ne health Nelson without that much health, and that salvo um, took a big chunk out of us as well. So now I'm just thinking, well, uh, do as much to the Nelson as we can before he takes us out. The Nelson does have a very high citadel, but the armor on the side is actually pretty good as long as he angles. You can see I didn't do much damage there, but he's going to show a little bit too much side. And the size of his citadel, combined with the proximity of our ships, means that two of my four shells are going to citadel him, and we are going to take him out for that Kraken. Looking at the results screen, um, of course we got the Close Quarters Expert and the Kraken, but ironically we also got the Dreadnought because we took those torps from the Sharnhorst, uh, calculated, I would say. Team score-wise, we were not the top of the team, but we were pretty close. Uh, ultimately, this wasn't that well played of a game, but I think it was pretty entertaining, and it illustrates some of the various aspects of the Gnize Now. Uh, detailed results, again, not too interesting. Uh, we did only do 300 to the Gnize Now to finish him off with the secondaries. Uh, so that is the Gnize Now, and hope you have a good day.